Melissa has been a diabetes care and education specialist for 23 years, focusing specifically on diabetes technology. She has been a certified insulin pump and continuous glucose monitor trainer for her entire career and provides education and support to patients and their families on these diabetes management tools. She has been tasked with keeping herself and the team at the Wendy Novak Center up to date as new technologies for diabetes management emerge. Heather Rush started working in pediatric endocrinology and diabetes as a pediatric nurse practitioner in 2007 after graduating with her master's in nursing from the University of Kentucky, then adding a certified diabetes educator certificate in 2010. Currently working at the Wendy Novak Diabetes Center in Norton Children's Pediatric Endocrinology, specializes in caring for patients with type 1 and type 2 diabetes. She enjoys working with families on diabetes technology with insulin pumps and continuous glucose monitoring systems, as well as new onset diabetes clinics. Please welcome Melissa Kleber and Heather Rush. Good afternoon. Thank you for the opportunity to speak today. I am going to share my screen. So, we are going to be talking today about advanced diabetes technology with closed loop insulin pump systems. Thank you, Dr. Wintergerst, for not stealing our thunder today. I know that was hard for you. We appreciate that. Um, I don't have any disclosures, and Heather does not have any disclosures today. Our learning objectives, we want to identify the closed loop systems that are currently available and being utilized here at the Wendy Novak Center discuss the basic differences between the systems and the supplies that go along with them, and review the advantages and disadvantages of the systems. So what are hybrid closed loop pump systems? They are algorithm driven automated insulin delivery systems. They are based on continuous glucose monitoring data and insulin pump settings combined with input from the user. The pump utilizes an algorithm that provides parameters for basal adjustments and some systems provide correction doses via the pump. The user does have to input carbohydrate grams and sometimes the glucose sensor number depending on which system they're using. And it's considered hybrid because the user still has to input data. So the pumps, they have gotten smarter and smarter as the years have gone on, but they're not smart enough to know how many grams of carbohydrate someone is eating. I wish there was an app or a pump that came out that had a, a camera. We could take a picture of the plate in front of us and know exactly how many carb grams are there. That would probably be the number one thing our patients would ask for. Unfortunately, they don't do that yet. So in the algorithms, there is a lot of data included. There are a lot of data points. Typically the total daily insulin dose utilized, the CGM levels and trends, how quickly things are changing, what the target ranges are, area under the curve, um, what the prediction is from 20 to 30 minutes in the past to what's gonna happen in the next 20 to 30 minutes. Rate of change, so how quickly is someone's blood sugar rising or falling is an important piece of all of these algorithms. Uh, there are other components that are specific to the pump systems. Some pump systems utilize different pieces of, of data in their algorithms. And the majority of these algorithms, at least two of the three are not shared, so we don't have every component, but we have an idea of what we can do as providers and as educators and as supporters of our patients who are on pumps. We know what we can adjust, and as time goes on and we become more proficient with these systems, we get it a better feeling and a better idea of how to adjust and help our patients have better outcomes. So there are three hybrid closed loop systems that we utilize and that are currently available. The T-Slim with Control IQ, this is a product made by Tandem Diabetes. This insulin pump communicates with the Dexcom G6 sensor currently. The Medtronic 670 or 770G, the 670 has recently gone through an upgrade now to the 770G. So we still have some patients utilizing the 670 we still have some utilizing the 770. 
the algorithms are the same. They've just updated the sensor a bit on the 770 side. They, their pump utilizes their own Medtronic Guardian sensor. And then we have what's called looping. And this is a do-it-yourself way to connect the Omnipod to the G6 sensor, so the Dexcom G6 sensor. This is not an FDA approved process, the looping system, but it is one that we have been able to utilize here in our clinic because of clinical data and data points and information that we've received over the years. And it has been shown to be safe and effective in, in patients. Some of the challenges of hybrid closed loop systems, our patients and their families have to be willing to allow the system to make daily adjustments. Sometimes there's a perception of less control over insulin doses. We have some families that are very involved in their patient or their children's care, and they like to have ultimate control over making adjustments. And so sometimes it's a leap of faith for them when we are suggesting and working on shifting their children from a more traditional pump system to hybrid closed loop. Our patients still have to carb count, and for a lot of them, that's a little bit of a challenge, um, and they have to put data in the pump. The, the pumps are only as good as the information that they're given. So if we have someone that says they're always eating 15 grams of carbohydrate, that's not typically true. And so sometimes the outcomes are not exactly what we're wanting, um, but we do see excellent outcomes with these pumps. We also have one system that does require finger sticks to calibrate the sensor and verify readings. So there are some of our patients that are still finger sticking with these systems. They have to wear two things. So they have to wear their pump site where the in insulin is infusing and a continuous glucose monitoring sensor. And one thing that we've noticed and has been shown in a lot of our patients, the algorithms can't always keep up with sudden changes. So if we have an acute illness with ketones or we have someone who suddenly goes on prednisone for an illness um, or sudden hormone changes, we have patients that take SATs and ACTs or they're going through emotional stress. Sometimes the pumps can't keep up with those things and we have to actually go in and, and do some manipulation to help with that. The advantages, however, are astounding. So we see and we hear from all of our families about a reduced a reduce daily burden of diabetes. They don't have to spend as much time micromanaging the diabetes. The mental energy that was needed to manage diabetes can be spent on other things. So these pumps will increase and decrease basal insulin, so that background insulin, depending on how the blood sugar is trending. Um, there's one system in particular, the T-SLIM, that will actually give correction doses if the blood sugar is predicted or the sensor sugar is predicted to be above a certain level. So our families aren't having to intervene as often or as much because the pumps are making some of these adjustments for them just in the background without beeping, without alarming, it's just happening. We have seen an incredible improvement in overall blood glucose control in our kids and our young adults who are using these systems. We strive for time and range, and time and range for us is between 70 and 80 milligrams per deciliter. We want our kids to have time and range as much as possible. Our goal is 70% of the time or more in that range, and we are achieving that quite frequently with our patients, particularly when they're inputting data and, and doing the things that we need them doing. We also see a lot of decrease in variability and blood glucose, the blood glucose readings. We're definitely seeing better blood glucose control overnight. When we look at these systems, it's almost a flat line all night long, which mimics the honeymoon phase and it mimics what was happening before our patients and our kids um, had got diabetes. There's also a reduced risk of low blood sugars because the pumps are scaling back insulin based on how the blood glucose or the sensor glucose is trending. 
and are slowing down and stopping insulin before the, the sensor reading actually gets low. We do have variable target ranges that allow for activity and sleep. So if we have someone that is going to be active, they can set a, a temporary target that's higher to allow for that activity to prevent the low blood sugars that can sometimes happen with activity. And we also see less stress both mentally and physically from large glucose fluctuations. We see that in our patients and their parents and their families. When their blood sugars aren't varying greatly throughout the day, they feel better, their bodies feel better, but mentally it's a lot less strain on them. The uh, next few slides, Heather um, is going to present. This is our first patient experience with one of our um, hybrid closed loop pump systems. And I'm gonna scroll through the slides for her. Awesome, thanks, Melissa. So the T-SLIM X2 pump um, with the control IQ, next slide. This is kind of what a picture looks like of what the pump looks like with the CGM data on it. And so you can see they have all of the information right there. The, with the T-SLIM, they also have a T-Connect mobile app so they can see that information on their phone. Um, it's not available yet, but hopefully at some point soon, they're gonna be able to bolus from that phone so they wouldn't even have to pull their pump out. But that's future technology. So with what we have right now, um, they've been able to use this pump to get in some new data. So next slide. Some of the quick features we're gonna go over before we start talking about our patient is this technology that the pump will adjust the basal insulin. So remember the basal insulin is what is going all day long and it is um, kind of that background. It's kind of helping with fluctuations from moods and attitude and activity and things like that. And so that little diamond there at the top changes colors based on what the pump is doing. Next slide. And so you can see based on this, it tells it what it's doing. So if the basal rate is pretty stable, the blood sugars are pretty stable, it stays kind of that grayish color. As it increases, you get blue so that you can tell that the pump is doing something different. Is it telling the person every time it gets this change? No but it's demonstrated on the pump. So if you wanted to look at it and see, a parent wanted to see what's going on, they could look at it and see, okay, the basal rate's going up because the blood sugar is going up. So it's doing some adjustments. The cool part is that the pump will actually stop the basal insulin. So if the blood sugar is dropping so much, it will stop that insulin to prevent the child or patient from having a low blood sugar. Next slide. It will also, if it feels that that basal increase that it's doing isn't enough, it'll give an autocorrection bolus. So it's giving an additional bolus of insulin automatically to help bring that blood sugar down. Um, as you'll see with, our, with my patient experience with this one, he gets a lot of correction boluses. He does sometimes forget to put in his um, carbs when he goes to eat. So this helps keep up with that. It's not perfect. And as you'll see with his numbers, it's not, it can't replace putting in our carbs, but it can help with that process a little bit more. Next slide. Um, there are also activity settings that you can use with this pump to help with some of that variability. Um, there's a sleep mode and an exercise mode. Um, and those just adjust the targets that the algorithm uses for the data. So those are just a couple key features about this pump that help with that automatic system. So next slide, we are gonna talk about Mr. Jackson and we've changed his name for privacy purposes. Um, next slide, Mr. Jackson is a 19 year old male. He was diagnosed with type one diabetes at 11 years old. And he'd been on a pump in the past. He wasn't really compliant with therapy. So we took him off the pump due to safety concerns and he was back on multiple daily injections. Um, he'd been working with um, some of our therapy team and just lots of different other things were going on. And I typically have been checking in with him about once a month or so. Next slide. So as you can see, looking at his A1C results, they are atrocious. Um, but in his benefit, 
we have come down from 16.1 last year and we were 12.5. So that's, it was a good change for him. Um, definitely not where we want him to be. <clears throat> and so at our visit in June, we had been talking, he'd been asking me, can I get back on my pump? Can I get back on my pump? Can I get back on my pump? I'm like, well, Mr. Jackson, I don't know. Like a safety, I was just concerned. But we had a long sit down discussion. We made a contract and it was kind of a, we will try it. However, if you end up in DKA or something, you know, you're not inputting your data, things happen, we are going to take this secure this away because it's more of a non-safe event. Um, next slide. So when I saw him in June, just for purposes, for comparison, his A1C was 12.5. He was on 34 units of Traceba and he was in target range 8% of the time. So definitely not where we wanted him to be. Next slide. So we started control IQ and in the first day, so we started on July 7th, July 8th, he was in target range more than he had been probably the last 10 years of his life. He's only had diabetes for nine years, eight years, but he, he was in target range more than what we ever expected him to do. And so next slide, we put his initial settings at 26 units of the total basal that was going in. So just kind of think, so he was at 34 of a Traceba and an A1C at 12.5. We had dropped him when we started the pump because the insulin in the pump was more effective. So I knew I didn't want to give him as much insulin or he would have a lot of lows. And so we started at 26. Um, so next slide. So he started July 7th, August 9th, he came back and he was already down to total daily insulin of 20 units, but his A1C dropped to 8.8%. We cried. Everybody that was present cried. He cried, his mom cried. It was one of the most um, influential events in my diabetes career to see what technology when used halfway correctly can do for a kid. He felt better. He had more energy. He gained weight. He had color to his like his skin. It was it was it was magic. Um, next slide. So if you can see over that next couple of months, um, our last visit was in September because he's now kind of doing what he's supposed to do, and his A1C is in target range pretty closely. His basal is now down to eighteen point eight. So he started, we've almost, we've dropped his basal almost half just because he's getting his insulin. Um, next slide. So these are what the reports look like from the T-Connect. So with the T-Slim pump. And as I told you, Jackson is not the best at bolusine before he eats. Um, and so you can see there's these little bitty look like water droplet almost and those are when it's giving auto correction boluses because it knows hey he's doing something else he needs more um and then you can see all the corrections in it so we take this data this report and we can look at it and help make changes but this pump has been life-changing for him in particular and most of our kids it's not always perfect, but it can make a huge difference in their world. Um, now, they still have to bolus, and if they don't, there can be issues. He had a lot of low blood sugars at the beginning because we had to get his doses adjusted, and they have to keep in contact with us. So there's definitely some work to do, but it's made a huge difference for him in particular, as most of our other kids have kind of felt the same and noticed the same thing. Okay, Melissa. Okay, so this is a report um, from one of our patients who is on the 770G. So this is the mini med Medtronic 770G. So it uses the Medtron uh, Medtronic Guardian 3 sensor and transmitter. It is a seven day wear sensor. 
and it has to be calibrated by blood glucose testing at least twice daily. Sometimes the pump will ask for additional glucose testing um, just to verify the sensor and to make sure that the trends and patterns that it is seeing in the algorithm are matching what's happening with the blood glucose. There are two different modes with the 770G. There's manual mode where the pump is giving insulin as it's been programmed. So the basal rates are running the way they've been programmed, but there is a suspend before low option. So the pump will stop the insulin before a designated number and we set that number or the patient does. And then it restarts once the glucose is stabilized and is not predicted to continue to drop. <laughs> then there is smart guard auto mode. So this is where the pump will increase or decrease the basal rate every five minutes based on the trend of the sensor glucose. Uh, you can set a temporary target of 150 for exercise with this. And when you look at the, the, the screen, and this is on the cell phone, but it would also be on the pump, you can see the sensor reading. You can see the insulin delivery history. So you can see where the insulin was increased or when it was slowed down or stopped. And you can see the glucose trend over time. So we have a patient named Peter. Um, his name was changed for privacy. He's a 20 year old male with type one diabetes since he was 10 years old. His diabetes has been well controlled for a long time. He's been on several different pump systems. He's been very motivated and has followed all the steps needed to maintain smart guard auto mode. And he has excellent family support. So you can see that he has had really good blood sugar control the majority of his diabetes journey. This is what his report looks like. So this is the assessment and progress report. It shows us time and range, percentage of lows, how much time is being spent in manual and auto mode, the sensor average, and also gives us active uh, information about the bolus amounts, the basal amounts, et cetera. This is a care link report that we get from downloading the pump. And here in the pink, you can see the basal increases. You can see where Peter went in and gave himself a bolus. This particular pump does not give auto correction boluses. It will only increase the basal rate. So it is a little, um, we have some patients that have to intervene a little bit sooner to keep the blood sugar from rising too much. You can also see where the pump has stopped insulin. This is a food and blood glucose correction bolus. You can see those throughout the day. And then in the gray here, this is active insulin. So this is insulin that is still working from these two boluses and eventually when it's not there anymore. Back to you, Heather. Okay, so now we're going to talk about a um, tech, technology, technique, whatever that we call looping. And this is not an FDA approved technology at this point. However, it's been around since 2013 and it was made by a dad who was tired of waiting on insulin companies, insulin pump companies, I'm sorry, to get this hybrid closed loop system. And so he developed <clears throat> this um, little device called a Riley link. Next slide. And so <clears throat> there was a Riley link, which looks a little bit differently than this little orange box that you can see over here on the left picture. That is actually the orange link, which is the updated version of the Riley link. But basically the Riley link would take the Omnipod, so that's the patch pump, take that pod, connect it through the Riley link to a Bluetooth, which would then send it directly to the phone. And then your Dexcom data is already Bluetooth and it's going directly to the phone. So people that develop this system have to make these algorithms and this technology by themselves. So it requires a 
um, extensive amount of time to build this algorithm and this loop, build the app. So you actually get to be an app builder. And so from information that I've been given, it can take anywhere from six to 10 to 12 hours for people to create this over time. Um, and a lot of it is you put some stuff in and then the computer and program has to work its magic and put some more stuff in. It just can take some time to do it. But our families that decide they want to do this, um, we make it clear that we cannot build this for you. This is something you have to do, but there is tons of information available from um, looping Facebook pages. There's a lot of information on the, they call them the loop docs. And so then in your app on your phone, you have the picture that's on the right that shows you what your glucose is, what your um, active insulin is, your insulin delivery, your car carbohydrates that you have going on in the body and gives you lots of good information. Um, so our patient that we're going to talk about next slide is her name is going to be Sarah today. And so Sarah is a 23 year old female with type one diabetes. She was diagnosed at age 10 and she's been using Omnipod and Dexcom for quite some time. Um, but she, as she's gotten older and started her adult job, she has decided that she was not as happy with the, um, results that she was getting from the Omnipod and the Dexcom without that the technology. And she decided she wanted to start trying to loop. So in January of this year, she started looping. Um, next slide. So at her visit in December, when we sat down, we were talking about everything. Um, we had an A1C of 10.3. She was on about 40.7 units of total daily insulin, but she was only in target range 23% of the time. And she would bolus sometimes. She definitely, like all of our other um, teenagers, young adults, even younger kids sometimes have trouble remembering the bolus sometimes before she would eat. Um, next slide. So we started looping and her visit in March was, again, we cried again. Um, and A1C dropped to 7%. Sarah has not seen an A1C that low since she was a kid and her parent was taking care of all of her diabetes management. Um, she was, and as she should have been so proud of herself and felt really accomplished that, that she was able to do that by herself. And through this technology, it has given her the confidence to manage her diabetes. And she now wants to manage it. So she, there was a time period where she was struggling to even want to be motivated to do anything different. And this helped give her that encouragement. Um, and she went up to in target range 66.7% of the time, which is from 23 to 66 is huge. Our goal is 70. So there's still some work to be done. Um, but she definitely had seen a much better and she felt better. She had more energy. She's now started an exercise program. Next slide. And we can see that her A1Cs just continued to get better. And so her basal's hanging out now between 37 and 38 um, units a day. She's got an A1C in the sixes. So we're under target, under the target of 7%. So super, super excited. Um, Sarah has started a new exercise program over the last two weeks. So I've been talking with her almost every day, trying to help her figure out how to do that. And with this technology, there are a way to do some temporary overrides. And we are working together to figure out what works best for her. Um, where the looping is a little bit different than some of the FDA approved, you can set your target blood sugar to whatever you want it to be. Um, I have a couple of kids that loop that have a target blood sugar set of 80 to 95. Um, Savannah's is typically 100 to 125 but we're working to adjust that so that when she does a temporary override for her sports, that she can bump it up to 140, 160, and maybe even 180 to kind of tweak that. So she's not having lows when she is going um, to exercise. So there's lots of different things you can do with this non-FDA approved pump that some of the other ones have restrictions on for safety purposes. Um, next slide. So there are two different ways you can pull reports from this loop doc 
for this loop, this looping system. There is Night Scout, and I know this looks really, really overwhelming. Um, the Loop Eliza report, honestly, is one of the best reports, in my opinion, just because everything is right there at one. Now, it's really hard. I, just, I pulled it as a week instead of a day. It's really hard to review as a week because that's a lot of data. But you can see that her basal is going up a lot, and it's not dropping very much. So she's kind of got these set, and then when it does the temporary changes, um, the orange, the little orange slides, yeah, that one, um, she's having a lot. So we've kind of had to adjust some things recently just based on her activity. And then you can see there's some um, breaks in the afternoon where she probably is eating a snack and not putting in her carbs, um, where there's no carb input and her blood sugar starts to spike a little bit. So then she remembers and she puts it in and things start to come back down into range. Um, next slide. The other report is called a tide pool report. And this report looks more like the ones that we've seen from um, the T-Slim and then the Medtronic where it tells you all of your um, variability. So we could go about these reports and this closed loop system for hours and hours. Um, Melissa and I talk about it frequently just because it's one of our favorite things. Um, and, you know, we hope that this was a little bit helpful. Um, I know it can still give you a lot of more questions and a lot of other information. Next slide, Melissa. Um, but if you have any questions for us, we are happy to help answer them. Um, and if you want any more information about any of it, Melissa or I will be glad to tell you anything you want to know. Because um, like I said, we can talk about it for hours. So thanks so much for your attention and hope this was helpful.